And so I want to welcome to the stage um, Sam and Andrew. Sam from Milligan and Andrew from Living Planet, who will talk a bit about their experience. And Andrew will delve into the Internet of Things and its relevance for retail. So please welcome Sam and Andrew. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the organisers for inviting us here to talk to you today. My name's Samantha Robinson. I'm the Marketing Director of Retail Developers Milligan. We're very much in the business of developing places where people are inspired to shop. At the heart of that mission is all about creating retail centres which are absolutely tailored to the digital age. This is very much driven by increasing customer demand. I think we've talked a lot about it today in terms of how people are choosing more and more to interact with the digital world whilst they're in the physical space. So today we're going to talk a little bit about London City Airport, which is an incredibly exciting technology project we're running with Living Planet. I think it's probably fair to say that more people have actually heard of the Internet of Things than have actually experienced it. So hopefully today we can get you pretty excited about the potential of a fully integrated technology strategy, as opposed to some of the clever initiatives that are still going on, working very much in silos. So what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about the background and the rationale of the project before handing over to Andrew from Living Planet, who will talk more about the concept of the Internet of Things and how the technology actually works. So our approach to technology is very much about embracing this connected customer. We all used to operate in the world of build it and they come, now it's very much connect it and they'll come. So through working with the UOS integrated platform, we're looking across all of our projects, not just, living, uh, not just London City Airport, to deliver real-time, personalised, contextual and dynamic customer experiences and not silo initiatives, as I referred to earlier. So our spaces are going to be seriously intelligent. They're going to understand at an aggregate level and an individual level as to who's in the space, what they're up to, and the actionable insight that comes out of the platform will help us even start to think or predict, rather, what they might be up to next. So this is a really exciting development for the retail space. We're talking about customer experience. We've had a few definitions today. My take on customer experience has sort of three components. One is incredibly high levels of satisfaction. The second is easy. Customers want easy. They want frictionless, compelling experiences, and they want wow. And I think that wow is becoming even more important in the physical space. So if we look at some consumer trends identified by the Future Foundation, if we start with totally bespoke, this is really about technology driving this ultra-personalization. And we heard Maurice talk about personalization earlier. This is only set to grow, in my opinion. Narrative data. This is almost where customers expect you to have pulled some kind of story together about their data. They're looking for you to create unique experiences tailored to them specifically as an individual. Probability gets personal. This is where consumers are harnessing the predictive technologies to preempt and prioritize their purchasing decisions. And lastly, the versatile shopper. Well, expectations are only growing in terms of this. They expect the seamless experience from home to store to mobile. And that's just as relevant to an airport and a shopping centre as it is to an individual retailer. A bit of background on London City Airport. I'm sure you all know the airport well. The owners will thank me for pointing out that this is indeed the only airport actually in London. Um, this is very much about an airport that connects the business passengers to the key financial hubs around Europe and also New York. It's interesting when you look at the stats of London City Airport, you can pretty much times all of them in comparison to the other airports by two or three times. This is an incredibly exclusive high net worth individual. And in other airports, they're hidden away in business lounges. Here at London City Airport, you have a captive audience and an amazing opportunity for brands to engage with these high net worth individuals. <coughs> The proposition of London City Airport is really crucial to remember when talking about the technology. Everything that they do is governed by their 20, 15 minute proposition. 20 minute check-in, 15 minute arrival on the plane and back onto the DLR. As I say, this is important to remember in terms of when you're looking at efficiencies and technology that we've done in the airport, this is really important to remember that we couldn't do anything that messed with that proposition. So where we came into play, we started continually telling the airport that just over 5% of their total passenger base actually represent over 30% of the airport journeys. So despite what we, are, what we heard about earlier of loyalty not existing, they do have a very loyal base. They have very frequent passenger. And rather alarmingly, they haven't got a clue who they are. They have no way of interacting with them. And everyone is employing ineffective marketing campaigns, which are essentially 
bouncing tennis balls off the back of people's heads because, in fact, they're not even hitting heads because they don't know who they are and they don't know where they're travelling. So we continually told them the importance of using technology to identify, acknowledge and engage with these loyal users via an active, real-time, integrated and intelligent platform. It was at this point that we introduced our technology partners to the airport who demonstrated the power of their platform, but also rather helpfully pointed out that we might be up for some government funding. So everything we're talking to you about today is actually a 12-month demonstrator funded by the Technology Strategy Board and goes live at the end of April. So we're still in testing phase, um, but I think we're learning a lot in terms of how, how the pull across for the rest of the projects as we get more and more involved in this. So we always start with asking why. Why are we doing this? We're doing this to give the right people, these loyal and frequent passengers, the right product, service and welcome in the right place at the right time, with a goal of enhancing revenues, reducing costs or efficiencies, enhancing that customer experience and using that rich and valuable insight to shape the rest of the business. Now, a key part of the technology solutions, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, was a smartphone app. This is not about producing an app just to tick the app box. This is about taking all of this amazing data, which Andrew will explain more about in a second, to actually come up with some seriously exciting features and benefits to the customer. And I describe it, it's a bit like my LCY on my own dashboard. I get what I want from the airport and when I want it. We heard earlier about the maps pointing out the near coffee shops. Well, you can order your coffee from the DLR and you can actually go and sit at your seat in the terminal and you can have it delivered, all powered by your app. Really exciting things that are coming across there. So future enhancements, if you talk about the uh, duty-free operator, for example, we're starting now to talk to them about embedding their product catalogues in the airport's app. This has never been done before by any other airport. They tend to point to the shops. They don't actually integrate with any of their point-of-sale systems, etc. So using image recognition, improving the passenger experience, speeding up, all, speeding up the automation of the payments, etc. But ultimately, kind of pinching the Amazon model of building up these really sophisticated profiles on these people and starting to give them the product recommendations, recommendations that they would seek. And ultimately, a bit minority report, but actually tailoring the digital signage driven by the passenger, who they are, the location, and based on their behavior at the airport. So a bit of a recap, the app is a one-stop shop proposition. There are multiple reasons for this customer to download and use the app. This is about acknowledging customers, it's about personalizing the alerts, giving them the notifications, so not just saying welcome back, but also telling them that right now it's going to take you about eight minutes to go through security. What did I say earlier? Passengers want easy. This is a frictionless, compelling experience. So the app is obviously the first step to the airport and also its partners in terms of the concessionaires understanding and acknowledging these frequent and valuable customers. Now, I wouldn't want you thinking that we're all doing all of this planning behind meeting room doors. We started a LinkedIn group at the beginning of the project and had some really good feedback and quite high levels of engagement. Again, unsurprisingly, they do want to be rewarded for their loyalty, even though they're business passengers and they're probably not paying for anything. They do want to get a little bit of reward along the way. And they like the idea of this framework that we can ideally integrate with the DLR, TFL, Addison Lee, for that matter, and embed their utilities into the app and again just enhancing the experience the end-to-end -end customer journey they want flight notifications but they don't want generic flight notifications they want real-time personalized notifications that's actually going to help them and save their time and boost their efficiency they want automated wi-fi but they don't want to sign in for it twice they want to be welcomed back and seamlessly entered into it and quickly and they wouldn't mind some exclusives and some discounts on some of the benefits at the airport now, I know that data and privacy is still a controversial topic, and I think a few people have touched on it today. Um, I think it was Clive that was saying, be cool and, and don't be creepy. I've hopefully shown you that we're going to be very cool here, and we've done a lot of work in terms of the give to get. If you tell us when you're flying and you tell us what you'd like from the airport, we will be able to offer you a highly relevant and highly personalized experience, and that is worth it. And in our view, where this goes wrong in terms of tracking and measurement, there's sort of two reasons. First of all, people tend to do it without telling people they're doing it. And secondly, they don't explain the benefits. And that, in our view, is the wrong way to approach this. The last thing I want to touch on today is we're talking about compelling customer experiences and partnerships. I think when you take those 
when you take technology and compelling experiences together, there are enormous opportunities across all of our projects to driving additional revenues. We've just announced a couple of weeks ago an incredibly exciting partnership at London City with Bloomberg. It's a three-year strategic partnership where they will, for the first time ever, take their brand immersion that they do in their offices out into a public space and seriously enhance the customer experience at the airport. So you'll have interactive media walls, exclusives for app holders, and some really exciting other initiatives. I'm not really supposed to be saying too much about it, but it launches at the airport in April, and it's really exciting. And hopefully, as a sort of concluding thought, this just shows another example of our sort of almost obsession to constantly innovate the end-to-end -end customer journey. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavour, and I'm now going to hand over to Andrew to continue. Thank you, Sam. Hello, everybody. My name's Andrew Roden. I'm the Chief Solutions Architect at Living Planet. I'm responsible for designing the exciting and innovative technology solutions in partnership with Milligan that we're implementing in their retail establishments, I'll, especially London City Airport, which I'll come on to talk about in a few minutes. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes to start with, though, to talk about the Internet of Things. It's probably something that a lot of you have heard about, but it probably means a few different things. So what is the Internet of Things? Well, it probably won't surprise you to know that the Internet of Things means different things to different people. It depends on who you talk to, when you talk to them. Everything from the concept of tagging anything and anything and letting computers analyse everything that's tagged, through to machines being able to talk to other machines and react based on inputs without any human intervention, creating autonomous systems. So all of these pieces of data that are going on are going on seamlessly in the background behind us. Some of the technologies that we can apply to an Internet of Things, CCTV. Most, if not all of you here that have any involvement in retail will have CCTV security systems in place. But how many of you are using those CCTV systems for anything other than security? Wi-Fi. We've all had the jokes today about Wi-Fi. Um, it is a basic need for everybody. Um, it's fine giving people access to the internet, but what are you getting back from it? Are you interacting with your customers? Are you talking to your customers via the Wi-Fi? It's a two-way street. Bluetooth low energy beacons, iBeacons as they're also known. Um, we've heard some talk about them today. Usually involved in sending specific messages to people based on their location or proximity to something. But how many of you are actually tracking which of your customers are collecting those messages, whether those messages are actually doing anything and affecting your customer's behavior or not? Digital screens or signage becoming much more ubiquitous throughout the retail environment and on the high street, um, usually as a means of advertising revenue for you, for your business. But how many of you are using them for other things, such as, again, interacting with your customers, making it a personal experience, wayfinding, things like this? I'm sure everybody in here has a smartphone. Smartphones connected to the internet. There's probably some Apple fans amongst us, those that prefer Android. We've already heard we've definitely got one Maverick with a Blackberry in here, and there's probably a few others that have some Windows phones too. But we all use our mobile phones as a platform. It's a platform for our social life. It connects us to email, to work, to personal email, connects us to social media such as Facebook and Twitter, connects us really to everything. And we all want to know what's going on now. Some of you are probably even checking your phones now just in case there's a crisis at work that needs responding to. It's got to be up to the minute. The fact that it is up to the minute is key to us. We're not that interested in what happened yesterday or last week or even last year. But yet, in the retail environment, we're quite happy to do lots of data mining about what happened yesterday or last week or last year. Perhaps there's a disconnect there. So what you need is a platform that's able to bring together the data that there already is in your environment to leverage the technology that there is in order to improve the retail environment for the customers and for you as retailers. The urban operating system from Living Planet is such a platform. 
This is a platform for added value. It allows you to pull together all of these different data sources and interact with the customers and also allow the customers to interact with their environment by taking external data feeds such as Transport for London information, information from the highways agency or the train companies, weather feeds, what's going on in the environment around people has the ability to influence their purchasing decisions as well. It also enables new customer experiences. One of the things that we've done at London City Airport is to implement a number of the technologies that I've talked about, CCTV, for example, but we've implemented video analytics on top of that. So we can tell you who's moving around, how long it's taking them to move. We can tell you from any point in the airport how long it's going to take you to get to any other point in the airport. We're getting real-time actionable insights onto what's happening in the airport. This turns every experience into a meaningful experience for the customers, which means that we can not only give you the rich CRM data that you would normally expect, such as who people are, where they're from, how much they spend, but we can also tell you other habits, such as whether or not they're the type of passenger that always turns up late to their flight and therefore would benefit from a green lane pass, for example, through security. We're also, for the passengers and the customers, giving them the ability to enhance and simplify their trip through the airport and giving them an enhanced journey. So what does this mean? Let me give you a real-world example of what we're doing at London City Airport. We've implemented, as I said, video analytics. We've upgraded and enhanced the Wi-Fi. We've deployed some of the Bluetooth low-energy beacons. And we're also integrating with the existing data that the airlines and the airport themselves have. And we're using this as an Internet of Things with machine-to-machine -machine communications to improve things for our customers. So I have to catch a flight to Geneva. Unfortunately, my previous meeting was running late, so I've missed my lunch. I open the LCY smartphone application when I'm on the DLR, a few minutes away from the airport. And I place an order for a drink and a sandwich through the smartphone application. And because it knows that I'm not yet at the airport, it puts that order into a hold queue. Once I actually arrive at the DLR, I get a personalized welcome message welcoming me back by name to the airport and asking me whether or not I want to confirm my pre-order. At this point, this is where the machine-to-machine -machine communication stuff starts to take over. We know how long it's going to take me to go through check-in, how long it's going to take me to go through the security queue. We know what flight I'm on, whether or not that flight is delayed. We know which gate that flight's going to. We've integrated with the retailer systems, so we know how long it takes the retailers to process food orders. So when I place my order, saying that I wish to confirm it, it takes into account where I am, what the queue time is for order processing at the retailer, what the queue time is for check-in, for security, how long it's going to take me to get to my gate, and comes up with a decision as to whether or not there's actually enough time for me to process my order, to collect it, and still make my flight. Assuming for a moment that there is enough time, because I've have left enough time to get to the airport. Once I've gone through security, I can pay for my order by the smartphone. So I can literally just walk up to the retailer, don't have to queue, can pick up my order. They can recognize me, they can greet me by name, thank me for my custom and wish me a pleasant flight. I can then go and if I want to look at the duty-free shop, I can go to the duty-free shop select the items that I want, go and sit down in the terminal and actually place my, the order for my goods from my seat in the terminal rather than in the store. And I can even arrange to collect those goods when I come back rather than having to carry them with me. Some of the other things that we're doing with the platform in retail in conjunction with our partners at Milligan across some of their other real estates integration with digital signage. Digital signage, as I mentioned earlier, is a great source of advertising revenue for people. 
but it's also a great source of information for customers in a retail environment, such as wayfinding. We've had the talk earlier about some of the internal mapping from Google, letting people know where things are. Well, if you use your giant advertising screens to allow people to plan their journeys, to be greeted by name, and then allow them to transfer that information from those screens off to their smartphones so that they've got their internal map of the location, they can plan their journeys, and it gives them an improved experience. You can also tie this in with your building management systems, with your lighting systems, for example. So in the event of an emergency, we can use the digital screens to direct people to the nearest exits. We can also integrate with the building management systems and do things like pre-stage elevators when we know where people are. There's nobody in the elevator rather than waiting until I've gone up and pressed the button at the elevator. It can already be on its way down to collect me. We have the ability to um, integrate with lighting. So we can turn the lights up or the lights down, depending on whether or not we've got people in there. We can turn the lifts and the escalators off. How's this relevant to retail? It's saving you money. At the end of the day, if you have the means of getting the people around and lighting the way for them, it's taking away from your bottom line. If we can reduce that cost for you, it's improving your margins as a retailer. Bluetooth Low Energy, great hot topic, likely to see an awful lot more of it. We're actually deploying it, as I say, at London City Airport, and not only are we using it for proximity, but we're also working currently on the ability to triangulate people based on Bluetooth. A lot of people will tell you about triangulation via Wi-Fi. Problem is, if you ever need to upgrade your Wi-Fi or change anything to your Wi-Fi, it kind of affects your location systems. So we're using Bluetooth to do that which is something that's really cool and innovative. There's lots and lots of things going on that I could tell you about. Um, hopefully, I've started to give you some idea of how these systems can talk to each other. It's about removing the silos of data. Big data is something that people talk a lot about. We only have a problem with big data because people are trying to mine information from the past in order to gain insights to the future. You have a platform to give you the information right now to your fingertips in real time gives you the ability to make informed decisions and interact with your customers. Thank you.